sir, on this side. Thank you, Mr. Chair and committee members. AB 1780 seeks to allocate 20% of cap and trade funds to the Trade Corridor Improvement Fund. Freight movement is a vital part of California's economy, generating more than 5 million jobs and 700 billion in revenue. But that freight movement system contributes 45% of the smog forming pollution in California. Likewise, it is a significant and growing contributor to the greenhouse gas emissions. Moving freight on an already overburdened system will worsen these effects. Our current infrastructure needs attention, especially since the freight economy is projected to grow significantly. AB 1780 takes a step in that direction by addressing this growth in a substantial way for both our environment and for our economy. For these reasons, I respectfully ask for your consideration on this bill. Here with me today on behalf of AB 1780 is the Riverside Mayor, Rusty Bailey, as well as Mitch Weiss, Deputy Director for the California Transportation Commission. So we do have a first and a second from Mr. Melinda, I mean, Mr. Linder and Ms. Melinda's. Yeah, I know, your hair is longer than his. <laughs> So anyway, we do have the first and the second acknowledged. Uh, Mr. Medina, who are you, are you having present first? Mayor Bailey, go ahead. Good afternoon, Chairman Frazier, members of the committee. My name is Rusty Bailey, and I'm proud to say that I am the mayor of my hometown, the City of Arts Innovation, Riverside. I'm also a commissioner of the Riverside County Transportation Commission. I'm here to testify in strong support of Assembly Bill 1780. I want to thank Assembly Member Medina, my Assembly Member, for authoring this important legislation. This bill, as you know, is about how the state invests its cap and trade dollars, but it's much more than that. It's about how state and local governments can partner to invest strategically in our trade infrastructure, to keep California and our cities economically competitive. And it's also about relieving the burden of air pollution and congestion for our residents, especially those, especially those who are most disadvantaged by the impacts of trucks and trains running constantly through their neighborhoods. Riverside is trisected by two transcontinental railroads that connect the ports of LA and Long Beach to the rest of the nation, and three major freeways that do the same. So my constituents live, breathe, see, hear, and feel the California's freight system every day. Given these challenges, we must continue to invest our limited resources on programs that make transportation infrastructure improvements possible. Programs that are proven to deliver on promises to taxpayers. Programs that have the potential to make a positive transformational impact for our neighborhoods, our transportation system, and our planet. The Trade Corridor Improvement Fund is one of those exceptional programs. Residents of the city and the county of Riverside, along with those communities throughout the Los Angeles Inland Empire Trade Corridor, have benefited greatly from the TCIF. In Riverside County, we used $156 million from TCIF to leverage another half a billion dollars and successfully delivered 13 high-priority goods movement projects on time and on target, all of which have made Riverside County's roads safer, our air cleaner, our economy stronger, and our quality of life better. My city has built five grade separations with support from TCIF as a part of Riverside's infrastructure renaissance, and yet Riverside and our neighboring cities and counties have much more work to do. As the mayor of the 12th largest city in California with 320,000 residents, including 50,000 college students, I applaud bills like this, AB 1780, as it secures state funding for projects that have local support and create a global impact. This bill is a win for the environment, a win for the economy, and a win for our constituents. So I urge you to vote a hearty aye on AB 1780 today. Thank you, and may God bless you all, and end your service to the state of California. Thank you so much. Thank you, next speaker, please. Say your name and who you represent. Mitch Weiss with the California Transportation Commission. The commission supports AB 1780. This bill is consistent with the Commission's perspective on the importance of funding freight, freight projects in the state. Unfortunately, the investment in California's freight infrastructure has not kept pace with the necessary improvements to maintain economic competitiveness, address the state's environmental goals, or meet the increased capacity demands. AB 1780 attempts to partially remedy this underinvestment. That's why the Commission is supportive of this measure. I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. 
Do you have any other members with you? Okay, so members of the public, please uh, state. Uh, Mr. Your... Chairman, Tim Eakin, representing the Alameda County uh, Quarter East Construction Authority and the Southern California Association of Governments, who has a pending position that the Regional Council will take up next week? Next week. I have to look to my president. Anyway, uh, we feel that uh, Mr. Medina's bill, as the chair's bill, 1591, and using cap and trade funds for TCIF is a natural, uh, either on the on the uh, international board like Mr. Benitez's bill is focused on, or through our ports. And we strongly encourage your support. Thank you. Next member of the public, please state your name and who you represent, please. Uh, Mr. Chair and members, Tim Chang with the Auto Club of Southern California. Uh, we concur with the, all the prior testimony, and as the mayor has uh, requested, we also request a hearty aye on this measure. Please state your name, who you represent, and if you have a complete agreement, please just state ditto. Mike Carpenter, AAA, Northern California, Nevada, and Utah. Ditto. Keith Dunn, Self Help Counties Coalition. I'll just say, as the uh, counties contribute to helping solve our solutions here in the state, we think freight's a major contributor to greenhouse gases, would encourage. The support position. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, name yeah. who you represent? Mike Jacob, uh, Pacific Merchant Shipping Association. We actually have a supportive amended position, but uh, look forward to working with the author, with the chairman, on on reconciling this with AB 1591 and also uh, Mr. O'Donnell's AB uh, 1657. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Name uh, who Mr. You chair and members, Tim Schott, on behalf of the California Association of Port Authorities, also in support. We also look forward to working with the author's office to reconcile other bills. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members, uh, Manny Diaz on behalf of the California Railroad Industry in support. Thank you. Chris Kahn representing Majestic Realty in support. Any other members of the public would like to speak in support of the author's bill? <laughs> Seeing none. Any members of the public that would like to speak in opposition to the author's bill? Seeing none. Any members of the committee that have questions for the author? Mr. Medina, would you like to close? Yeah, before I, I close, I wanted to extend an opportunity to the chair to uh, be a co-author. It's in my closing statement, sir. Okay. <laughs> With that, I respectfully ask for your I vote. Thank you very much for that. And But we do have a first from Mr. Linder and second from Ms. Melendez. Um, Mr. Medina, thank you for bringing this uh, bill to our committee today. TCIF is a proven model. It creates a collaborative process, it gets priority projects accomplished, and most importantly, it creates leveraging. And as for using cap and trade dollars, the transportation sector generates some 40% of the missions, so it makes, this, it makes sense that cap and trade dollars uh, funding can be directed to transportation projects that reduce emissions. I really do believe in this program. So I'll be supporting your bill today and would absolutely appreciate being added as a co-author going forward, as has been mentioned by the public, uh, about 1591 in parallel, uh, trying to create the same opportunities. And so with that, M Madam Secretary, would you please call the roll? The motion is due pass to the Assembly Appropriations Committee. Frazier? Aye. Frazier, aye. Linder? Aye. Linder, aye. Baker? Aye. Baker, aye. Bloom? Not voting. Bloom, not voting. Brown? Chu? Aye. I'm sorry? Chu, aye. Daly? Aye. Daly, aye. Dodd? Aye. Dodd, aye. Eduardo Garcia? Gomez? Kim? Aye. Kim, aye. Mathis? Medina? Aye. Medina, aye. Melendez? Aye. Melendez, aye. Nazarian? O'Donnell? It has nine. It is out. We will leave the roll open for absent members. Congratulations, Mr. Medina. Thank, Thank you. you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Bailey, thank you for coming out, sir. Are you ready? You might as well vote, do both of them, huh? Okay. Mr. Linder, we'll go ahead and do AB 1833, and then we'll move on to AB 2145. Uh, 1833 first. Okay. Just make sure you so call it what you. 
1833. 1833, Mr. Linder, start when you're ready, please. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chair and members. California's infrastructure is reaching a critical mass. Last year, Governor Brown identified $66 billion in deferred maintenance. In 2011, the CTC identified a $200 billion shortfall in funding for our projects. These numbers are, as the governor said, staggering. On top of all this, Proposition 1B funds have been exhausted, leaving a massive funding gap. Understandably, the legislature has been debating funding proposals to try and address these deficits with little progress to show. While these talks continue, the legislature must press forward on other solutions. In recent years, California has embraced new procurement methods, such as design builds and uh, CMGC, reducing costs and delivery times. AB 1833 use, simply uses that same language that the governor has proposed to streamline and address environmental costs by authorizing Caltrans to use advanced mitigation for transportation projects. While regions around the state have been at the forefront of mitigating environmental impacts, the state as a whole has been slow to adopt these policies. Orange and Riverside County have both been early in adoption of advanced mitigation and have been able to realize significant savings by estimating the impacts from one or many transportation projects before or during the planning phase, instead of waiting till, until relatively late in the process. Other states and localities have begun implementing advanced mitigation for its potential benefits of reducing project delays and costs and improving mitigation quality to align with statewide and regional conservation priorities. States like Michigan have estimated the cost savings of $70,000 per acre, and Washington has estimated between 30% and 80% in cost savings over traditional wetland mitigation. I know there have been some concerns raised by environmental groups over whether this bill is needed and that Caltrans can already do this. My only response to this is that the governor must not have felt that way uh, since he included this language in his transportation proposal. While I may not agree with the governor on everything, if he, says the, if he says Caltrans needs assurances from his administration to use a mitigation process that saves time and allows for taxpayer money to be used in a more thoughtful process, then I don't see any harm in stating it clearly in law and clearing the air once and for all. Uh, with me today is uh, Mark Watts with, uh, with uh, uh, who are you representing today? <laughs> RCTC, okay. <laughs> I got, got a couple different uh, different uh, witnesses, so please introduce yourself as you as you're as you're uh, called. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members, Mark Watts here today on, on behalf of the Riverside County Transportation Commission. As the author pointed out, uh, Riverside County and the RCTC has had a very successful um, uh, effort uh, that was uh, that, that's modeled on the program that he's proposing today, and we've collaborated as well with Orange County, and uh, we urge your vote. Any other witnesses in support of your bill, Mr. Linder? Mitch Weiss Please. with the California Transportation Commission. The commission supports AB 1833. This bill is consistent with the commission's statutory recommendations provided to the legislature in the commission's 2015 annual report. The modernization streamlining of permitting and environmental clearance requirements for transportation projects should be considered as a part of a balanced reform package to shorten the implementation time for projects enable more predictable time for timing for construction and to reduce litigation costs. Advanced mitigation is a way to provide high quality replacement habitat, achieve economies of scale in its development and reduce project delivery delays. AB 1833 creates a framework for development of a robust state level advanced mitigation program and therefore the commission supports this measure. Any other members of the public that would like to testify in support of the author's bill? Uh, Bill Higgins with the California Association of Councils of Governments, and we concur with the Transportation Commission's remarks. Thank you. Any other members of the public? Any other? Uh, do we have any members of the public that would like to testify in opposition to the author's bill? Seeing none, any questions from our committee of the author? Mr. Linder, would you like to close? Certainly. I respectfully ask for an I vote. So thank you, Mr. Linder, for bringing this bill to our committee. Uh, I like the idea of advanced mitigation. I've seen it done well in uh, Riverside County, matter of fact. And uh, I think your bill is lacking the key thing that Caltrans really need to make this happen. It's called money. And we can do something to make that happen, you and me. Just saying. 
I'm going to be supporting your bill today, and I'm going to help you get some transportation dollars so that we can make this effort a, a success. That's you and me. So looking forward to working with you on, on both issues, and uh, I'll be supporting this. Madam Secretary, please call the roll. Oh, we do not have a motion. We have Baker and Mr. Bloom, second. Uh, Madam Secretary, please call the roll. The motion is due passed to the Assembly Natural Resources Committee. Frazier? Aye. Frazier, aye. Linder? Aye. Linder, aye. Baker? Baker, aye. Bloom? Aye. Bloom, aye. Brown? Chu? Aye. Chu, aye. Daly? Aye. Daly, aye. Dodd? Dodd, aye. Eduardo Garcia? Gomez? Kim? Mathis? Medina? Medina I, Melendez, Melendez I, Nazarian, O'Donnell. The bill has nine. Is how we'll leave the roll open for absent members. Thank you. Uh, would you please uh, proceed to your next bill, please? Certainly. That would be twenty-one forty-five. Twenty-one forty-five. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members. We all know that our poorest communities are the hardest hit by air pollution and the health effects that are caused by air pollution. AB 2145 is a bill that will help alleviate some of the burden that low-income individuals have when purchasing a zero-emission vehicle and receiving their vehicle registration in the mail. Specifically, it will help the low-income buyers of electric vehicles that use a clean vehicle rebate to purchase the vehicle. Every single one of us car owners have to pay a vehicle license fee, or VLF, which is included with your annual <laughs> registration fee. This fee is calculated by taking 0.65% of the vehicle's total worth or the purchase price of the vehicle. This is absolutely in fine and necessary in most cases, but in cases where the people with lower incomes are using rebates to help them afford a clean vehicle, they are suffering from sticker shock when they have to pay a vehicle licensing fee on the pre-rebate value of the car, not the physical cost that they pay out of pocket. The committee analysis cited the Valley CAN surveys that described the buyers of these vehicles receiving these rebates as being giddy over the savings. But do these buyers know that they are paying higher, paying taxes on the amount that they didn't actually pay? If they knew this, they might not be so giddy. We're already helping these individuals purchase an electric vehicle with rebates. Don't these people deserve the same savings on their taxes? Taxes. I'm happy to address uh, any questions from the committee. Mr. Linder, do you have anybody to testify in support of your bill? Just me. Okay. Any members of the public would like to speak in opposition of the bill? Seeing none, any members of the committee that have any questions of the author? I'm looking for either a motion. A motion from Assemblymember Baker. Set motion by Assemblymember Bloom. Mr. Linder, would you like to close? Certainly. Um, we as a legislative body have already passed a bill this session to waive the diaper tax for low-income families, which uh, I supported. That bill will save a family around $100 a year in taxes. <clears throat> My bill, AB 2145, would provide that same amount of relief to a low-income family purchasing an electric vehicle. The average family would save $100 on their total, total vehicle registration bill. Now, that might not seem like a, a lot of money to some of us, but as we discussed with the diaper tax legislation, to a low-income fa low family, that extra $100 is equivalent to groceries for a week or paying for one month's uh, utility bill. Why would we want, not want to help these families more? This is a small amount of money that our state budget, or out of our state budget, but $100 can have a large effect on people who are just trying to get by paycheck to paycheck. By supporting my bill today, you will be helping a California family, so I would uh, uh, respectfully request an I vote. So thank you, Mr. Linder, for bringing the bill to our committee. I also agree that we need to provide low-income people as much incentive as possible to get them to scrap their high-polluting cars and replace them with cleaner cars. What we're doing, though, seems to be working because these programs are continuously oversubscribed. What I'm hearing from my low-income individuals that, that use the program is that they are experiencing significant monthly savings when they buy zero-emission vehicles. I'm hearing things like, 
I have so much extra money each month from fewer repair costs and not paying for gas that now I can now go back to school, um, not get written up at work for being late because my car continually breaks down. And for the first time, I have enough extra money I can take my kids to Disneyland because I was able to get these cars and I'm saving money. Given the substantial interest in the programs and the benefits they provide, we can do a lot more good by making them more widely available to low-income people. And for these reasons, I'm, I won't be supporting your bill today. And I hope that we can come together and look at how we can get better supply to the low-income people because of what it actually does accomplish. Uh, Madam Secretary, please call the roll. The motion is due passed to the Assembly Appropriations Committee. Frazier? No. Frazier, no. Linder? Aye. Linder, aye. Baker? Aye. Baker, aye. Bloom? Aye. Bloom, aye. Brown? Chu? No. Chu, no. Daly? Aye. No. Daly, not voting. Dodd? No. Dodd, no. Eduardo Garcia? Yeah. Eduardo Garcia, not voting. Gomez? Kim? Mathis? Medina? No. Medina, no. Melendez? Melendez not voting. Nazarian? O'Donnell. That has three I votes. We'll leave the roll open for absent members. Thank you. So we will go on to Assembly Member Baker, 1938. Good afternoon. Thank you for sh presenting today and proceed when you're ready. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm pleased to present to you today AB 1938. This bill provides that the transfers of money from the Bay Area Toll Authority, also known affectionately as BATA, uh, to the Metropolitan Transportation Commission, or MTC, are limited to an amount equal to mo no more than 1% of gross annual toll revenues, regardless of the source of those funds and whether or not they came directly from toll revenues. The purpose of this bill is to, in part, close a loophole that BATA and MTC have wiggled through from prior passage of laws from this State Assembly, and to ensure that toll revenue is used for the maintenance and repair of our toll bridges and related transportation infrastructure, and not to costs completely unrelated to transportation. A little brief history here. BATA is the agency responsible for administering toll revenue from seven State-owned toll bridges. The Streets and Highways Code specifies that toll revenue like that can be used for two purposes, bridge operations and related bridge and infrastructure improvements. MTC and BATA are managed by the same staff and governed by the same board. MTC has office space in downtown Oakland. I've been there to attend transportation hearings. I know that many of you have been as well. The office space is completely adequate and meets the needs of MTC. Yet in 2011, MTC decided it wanted to move to downtown San Francisco. Not only did it want nicer office space in a prime location, but it wanted vastly more office space than it actually needed so that it could rent some of that space out to private tenants and become a landlord. So MTC joined with BATA to buy and renovate office space in the heart of one of the single most expensive commercial office space locations in the country. When they came together in a JPA, they committed $93 million in bridge toll money for the purchase of a new headquarters and an additional $73 million to retrofit and renovate the structure. This rightly raised many red flags. Why should toll revenue that under state law should be spent on bridges and bridge and transportation infrastructure be used for office space that is not entirely necessary and is vastly more space than is, is needed at all by the agency? Was MC, MTC, why was MTC trying to become a landlord? and in the most expensive commercial property location probably in the state. The new eight-story headquarters building is excessive for the agency's needs and has required over $256 million of taxpayer and tollpayer funds. The building includes a $7 million eight-story tall open-air atrium and $48 million of carpet and furnishings and finishes. It is 53% over budget. Now, Legislative Council took a look at this project and issued an opinion that the purchase and leasing of the space to non-transportation entities, as MTC had planned, exceeded MTC and BATA's authority to begin with. They don't have statutory authority to do it. The state auditor then audited this transaction and found that there was a significant risk that MTC and BATA would not be able to repay the toll revenues used for the project. These, again, are toll revenues that should be used for bridge maintenance and transportation infrastructure. 
As a result of the auditor's report, the legislature in 2013 unanimously passed and the governor signed SB 613. SB 613 prohibited BATA from using toll revenue on real estate acquisitions and capped expenditures of, for this project and the cost of staff and office space to only 1% of toll revenue. So it put a cap on how much toll revenue could be used for a project like this. The purpose of the cap is obvious. It's to make sure the toll money actually goes into transportation infrastructure. Despite this 1% cap, and that bill, by the way, was unanimously passed by this legislature before it was signed by the governor. Despite the cap, BATA decided to ignore the intent of the legislature and transferred an additional $33 million to MTC for the headquarters. In doing so, it claimed that these funds were not toll revenue, so they weren't subject to the cap. It went around the intent of this legislature. Now, previously, MTC had committed nearly $150 million of bridge toll money to this project, but insists no more toll money is used. Instead, the money is going to come from savings derived from refinancing bonds, money for bonds derived from two sources, state funds from taxpayers and bridge tolls. Let's be clear, if it weren't for this building, the money that's gone into it could go into transportation. The savings from the bond refinancing could also go into transportation improvements. Now, MTC and BATA have stated that they plan to recoup the money spent on the new headquarters over a 30-year period by leasing out the unused space to private tenants. There's a few problems with this speculation. The state auditor rebuked the MTC for failing to disclose that its own CFO's calculations show that the agency will not be able to repay the bridge toll money as promised. In fact, the design and plan changes to the building have cut the building's leasable space in half. Furthermore, it's not MTC and BATA's core mission to be commercial real estate landlords. Their job is to work with us and work with our regional communities to improve transportation infrastructure. This bill closes a loophole that allowed BATA to get around SB 613 by saying that BATA can make to MTC no more than a transfer of 1% equivalent of toll revenues, whether it's toll money or not. That will keep BATA from reclassifying funds as non-toll revenue to get around SB 613. As we've heard today and many times, California's transportation infrastructure is in desperate need of funding and repair, and our constituents are frankly fed up with transportation dollars that are taken from them in the name of transportation improvements and put into other things. Closing this loophole will help ensure that toll payer money is used for infrastructure needs and the funds are meant for where they are intended to be. And I'd like to add on an additional point about local control. Um, let's be clear, these are state agencies. MTC is an arm of the state. It is one that is authorized by the state. These are seven state-owned toll bridges. And the toll money that's coming from them is state money. And this body, this committee just passed together uh, a measure regulating parking in a local jurisdiction, which I think we all would agree is a pretty local control measure. So I strongly urge us to have the oversight that was approved in SB 613 and supported by the governor and close the loophole and protect taxpayer funds and toll payer funds on this legislation. I urge your I vote and I thank you for it. Yes. Testify in support. Indeed. Mr. Chairman, members, David Wolf with the Howard Jarvis Taxpayers Association. We're in support of this bill today. And Mr. Chairman, there's not a whole lot I can do to improve on the excellent presentation by the author summarizing just the uh, complete debacle that the situation is, with the exception to say, how many more bills do we need to pass through this legislature to deal with this problem? Let's do it right. Let's pass this. Ask for an I vote. Any other members of the public in support of uh, this bill? Any members of the public in opposition to this bill? Any members of the committee that would like to ask questions? Mr. Dodd? Yeah, I, I just uh, have a statement. I, I understand the intent of the original language. I certainly understand uh, SB 613, um, which was uh, to limit the toll, use of toll revenues for efforts that arguably do not directly support the work of the Bay Area Toll Authority. However, I think we need to be careful not to uh, micromanage these local agencies. I, as a former chair of, of BATA and a member of BATA, uh, I can stand here and, and tell you today that uh, I supported the decisions that were made there. And uh, I think the author makes a lot of points that uh, aren't substantially uh, backed up by fact. And with that, uh, I may or may not like the decisions that uh, have been made, but I defend the right of locals that are in those positions to uh, to make them. So for local control purposes, I'm 
will uh, not be supporting this bill. Any other questions of the committee of the author? I just have a couple. Uh, Ms. Baker, uh, had you ever served with any of the members on MTC or BATA in a local capacity? Uh, not in elective office, no. Okay. Um, has any of those officials that are on that in that capacity on either one of those boards uh, are they they're not here championing for your cause uh, they want to move they want to go to a nicer building in San Francisco they don't want to have the loophole closed by them and I I really as you notice I really was not targeting particular individuals I know that they are not elected they are not accountable for this decision to voters we are the only ones who represent the constituents who are affected by this decision um, so I, I don't impugn their intent. I don't impugn their integrity as individuals. Uh, I do uh, believe that they've made a wrong decision by trying to circumvent the law that this body stood behind unanimously and the governor signed by reclassifying funds. And I believe that it's our role to not allow that to happen. I understand. Uh, you have a motion by Ms. Melendez. Second. We have a second by Mr. Linder. Um, would you like to close? Well, I, I thank uh, colleagues for their thoughtful listening to my remarks. I, I do want to say I'd hardly consider this micromanagement. Um, if there's any area where I have been factually incorrect, I'd be happy to be uh, meet with uh, Member Dodd and, and find out where that is. But one thing I do know is what the mission of MTC is, what the mission of BATA is, and how much we need to keep transportation dollars dedicated to transportation and how important that is. I wouldn't see this as micromanaging. I would see this as holding state agencies accountable for how they use state dollars on state bridges. And it's an oversight role that we should, we should undertake. And I uh, respectfully ask for your I vote. Thank you, Ms. Baker. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to support your bill today. As a chair, I've made it a point to consistently push for greater and greater and great local control when it's appropriate, and I mean appropriate. These are members of the nine Bay Area counties that are all appointed by their peers to represent all of the people in the Bay Area. I think this bill goes in the wrong direction. And I'm going to vote no and urge all of my colleagues to vote no also. Uh, reason being as stated uh, we want to make sure that the people that are appointed by their peers to be able to do a job are not micromanaged by somebody when I was the mayor of my city I did not like the state telling me how or what I would do and so I'm gonna uh, turn that over to the secretary right now for the vote oh mr. Dodd did you have a comment yeah, since uh, you challenged me on that, you know, the, the idea that MTC wants to be the landlord, mm -hmm. you know, what you, what you are ignoring here is this was absolutely months and months and months of public hearings and people, and we have people right now in our legislature in the state assembly that are trying to think of legislation to bring MTC and A Bank together. Mm -hmm. And this was part of that whole process to bring MTC, A Bank, the Air Board, and BCDC under one roof so that we could work together to uh, find common solutions uh, to Bay Area problems. The transparency with this move was absolutely clear and, and, and without argument. And, and more and more, I keep hearing these. I keep hearing these concerns. There was even concerns from uh, of even moving out of Oakland, and legislature members of this legislature were involved uh, in this uh, in this whole public dialogue. Mm -hmm. So the idea that we're saying that this is just MTC wants to be a, a, a landlord is just uh, without merit. Finally, the only place they could find in the San Francisco area when it was finally decided to go there had more floors on it than that was really needed. They bought at the bottom of the market. Uh, the market has increased substantially. Whether what, what the financial repercussions of that are today, net, 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 I just do not know. But this thing was totally and completely transparent throughout the entire Bay Area and this legislature. Well, I'm glad to hear that there was good Thank transparency in that uh, decision making. I will say this is not about whether or not they're going to go forward with the building. This is how they are going to be good stewards of the dollars. The toll money that's intended under state law to go towards toll bridges, 
not to real estate, to go to infrastructure and the needs that we have. And I, I think it's important to applaud MTC for having the tra transparency of that. I know that I heard from many constituents in my district and other districts about the, their lack of ability to, to hold that decision accountable because they had nobody else they could go to, nobody else they could vote against who had made the decision to do that with their taxpayer dollars. So what this is about is ensuring that the dollars that are being spent for this project are not toll revenues or more than 1% of the equivalent of toll revenues, and that that money stays in the hands of transportation improvements and infrastructure. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. With that, Madam Secretary, please call the roll. The motion is due pass to the Assembly Appropriations Committee. Fraser? No. Fraser, no. Linder? Aye. Linder, aye. Baker? Aye. Baker, aye. Bloom? Yes. Bloom, no. Brown? Chu? Daly? Dodd? No. Dodd, no. Eduardo Garcia? Not voting. Gomez? Kim? Mathis? Medina? Medina, no. Melendez? Melendez, I. Nazarian? O'Donnell? You, the bill has three. We'll leave the uh, roll open for absent members. Thank you. Nineteen sixty four. 